They have dreams. They, they want wives. They want a home. In the summer of 2015, the world watched thousands of refugees fight their way through the fences to freedom. It all began boat by boat. And it continued foot by foot. In this program, we will take you along that so-called Balkan route. Hello, I'm Zoran Strika. And I'm Patricia Topic. In an era of fake news, these are the true facts. And the numbers are startling about refugee crisis. International Organization for Migration say that over 900,000 migrants arrived in Greece in 2015. And since then, of course, thousands more. 93% of them by sea. We are here at the border of Slovenia and we invite you to join us as we explore heartache and heroism connected to this crisis. And the hatred and the hope captured by global media. But what stories have not been told yet? That's our program's mission. These are tough stories to tell and sometimes to watch. Our reporter Rebecca Lesset has spent two years covering this crisis. Traveling from Greece to here in Slovenia near the border. Trying to connect complicated pieces of reporting refugees. You will see, mm -hmm. this is the main border between Greece and Macedonia. I'm here, I'm waiting to go on Germany. Far away from his homeland in Syria, engineer Nuri Stad vividly remembers his life in Ariha. His children in school, his wife a teacher. War took everything. To save their lives, they fled. My family go, went to German. Before me, nearly four months before me. Why? because the money is not enough to all. With his family safe in Germany, Nuri began his own journey to be reunited. First Turkey, then Greece. Arriving by train at the Macedonian-Serbian border, he was stopped. Officials wouldn't let him go further. We were staying 20 days. The border is closed. We try to insert Serbia we can't Nuri was stopped on March 7 2016 one day later in faraway Brussels the EU officials closed the Balkan route stopping Nuri in his tracks in Macedonia he was sent to the Vinoyuk in Gavgelia transit center at the peak of the crisis, 700 refugees lived here. Some still do, including Nuri. Only a few meters from Nuri's temporary home lives Leila, an Iraqi with three daughters. While Nuri learns German, Leila tries to pick up some English. Before I don't speak English and don't just I speak Kurdish, but now I can't speak Kurdish, uh, Arabic and English. While Leila's husband waits in Germany, she and her daughters hope each day for the documents to join him. It's very good. No, like Iraq, in Iraq we have sleep with scared because in Dash is very problems for me because I'm SED. But this year is very good for me and for my children. At the peak of the refugee crisis, the biggest wave was here, in Macedonia, where more than 8,100 refugees crossed the Macedonian-Serbian border. On just one day, 13,000 people crossed. Macedonia was only a transit country, which meant that refugees had only 72 hours before they had to leave or they would be sent back. In Skopje, Macedonia's capital, the political impact of crisis was felt. The country couldn't financially support refugees. Volunteers came to rescue. One of them, Yasmin Rejepi, witnessed what he perceived as mistreatment. Our police responds to violence in such a way, which is 
s jedne strane zakonski, što je s druge strane kad ti ljudi znamo da nisu naoružani, da prekomerna sila i nije u redu i da samo zatvaranje balkanske rute i stavljanje tolike ograde na makedonskoj granici je protiv njihovih prava, odnosno krši njihove prava za slobodu i za slobodu kretanja. Skopje residents, like Vladimir Grozdanov, aren't against refugees, but have safety concerns. Pomaže Evropska unija, šta pomaže? Šalju nam vozila, umjesto da šalju pare, pošto ljudi traže hranu, treba svaki dan da se hrani to ljudstvo. Ima ekipe medicinske, treba se plaćaju to. To je to moje mišljenje. Makedonija je uradila maksimum što je mogla, Evropa nek se angažuje malo. When Greece started shuffling refugees and even closing some camps, smugglers found opportunity. Yasmin dealt with many refugees' destinies, including Nuri. It looks like Nuri will finally receive the temporary travel documents to reunite with his family in Germany. Good. Iza mene je Grčko-Makedonska granica koju su od početka izbjegličke krize prešle na tisuće izbjeglica. U Grčko ih trenutno ima više od 60 tisuća. Smješteni su u kampovima gdje čekaju na relokaciju, no ona je moguća za samo neke od njih. Only the refugees who crossed before April 20, 2016 were allowed to ask for a relocation to another EU country. Those who came after the deal can apply for asylum in Greece. If their application is rejected, they are sent back to Turkey. Turkey is obliged by the treaty with EU to accept the refugees. For every refugee that is taken back under this deal, Turkey receives financial support from EU. A Greek journalist Mariana Karakoulaki thinks EU reacted too late. Uh, the relocation program is supposed to end uh, on September 2017, but it's slow. And uh, the other European countries did not respond as fast as they should respond. And then we have the question of uh, are the conditions uh, okay for refugees in other European countries? Because there were examples of people being relocated into Bulgaria or Romania, for example. And then they decided to come back to Greece and apply for asylum in Greece. At the Thessaloniki railway station, we found Mariam and her family heading back home to Iraq, stuck on the Greek refugee route with no hope to proceed. Like many others, they crossed from Turkey to Greece in a boat. Mariam will never forget the journey as smugglers took advantage of her family. He took the money from us to have a place and it was an apartment. But we cannot go outside. He bring for us everything, the food and everything from that because we don't have paper or everything for the police. For So it's too hard for us to be outside. And then he call us and he say, you need to be ready, we will go now. And when we left, we will see the boat, but we didn't go because it was too small and we are many people so it's, it's like oh my god we cannot we will die they took the risk after one hour at the sea the greek police picked them up and moved them to the island of lesbos and later they were transferred to the camp near thessaloniki with no chance of getting to western europe for syrians afghanistans and iraqis those under a refugee status there are more opportunities to apply for shelter than those without the status from such countries as pakistan or south africa they live on streets in abandoned houses city parks i don't good feeling uh, this place but uh, i researching every day for a home a house uh, but uh, i don't know why he not uh, give me a house because he say are you pakistani i don't give you i don't uh, we don't want to give you a house i don't know why because uh, we are human the only help these refugees receive is from ngos and volunteers mama and my mother my mama is very special yes I am the face they see every day because I came with the distribution, but I am behind me and near to me is a lot of uh, volunteers, independent volunteers who came for 15 days and cook in the kitchen. We are a lot of people. Yeah, I want to try. Ah, but you won't try. Their mama comes from Spain. 
She works for the volunteer organization GBGE. Their van brings them food every day. Now we go for the last uh, stop in the distribution is uh, we call the abandoned building. And we have there the events of the day, like uh, 60, 100 person. The last year is 400 uh, person inside. And they are waiting. Helping thousands of refugees in the camps or on the streets continues. The borders are officially closed, but at least 8,000 refugees have fled to Greece in 2017. They have escaped war, but now finding the new home remains their biggest hunger. There are 12 reception centers in Serbia. Despite that, almost 1,000 refugees can be seen wandering to the streets of Belgrade. Reporter Ivan Atanavkovic talked to the three men who chose to avoid camps. This is not a refugee camp. This is an abandoned warehouse where refugees found shelter. Here, in the center of Belgrade, they wait for smugglers to take them to freedom. These refugees, mostly men from Afghanistan and Pakistan, sleep in tents without electricity, water or even a toilet nearby. Problem, heat problem, border problem, this Serbia problem. Everywhere is dust and uh, a lot of people shouting there, so too much problem. People are fighting with each other because they are tired here. Since late 2015, the Balkan borders are closed for refugees. Thousands of people fleeing from war were stuck in this warehouse in the center of Belgrade. <laughs> this bamba, this... This... Uh, this... This, what is this? Hey, hello. This Afghanistan bamba. And this problem. This... This... They're uh, good people stuck in a bad place. It's such a bad place, but, but it's better than where they came from. American Baptist church member Larry Stanton has spent almost two years volunteering in the countries on the Balkan route. Today my assignment is uh, the line. Uh, I kind of watch that people don't skip the line. And uh, uh, I entertain and then I, uh, I try to make them laugh and I try to let them have a little bit of fun. I see friends we have. Good So dry your tears and say no. 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 No Bulgaria good, Bulgaria police no Fair. good, people no good. I'm a Serbia police good, uh, people good, and Serbia good. They're 20 something, they're, they're like my sons, they're, uh, they, they have dreams, they, they want wives, they want a home, you know? Uh, and, 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 and that's been lost. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, somehow uh, this is resolved and uh, and, 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 and they get to fulfill some of those dreams. In late spring 2017, this man learned that the Belgrade city government ordered the warehouse torn down to make way for a waterfront development project. I mean, we 20 days here, we finish. After 20 days, all that was left from the improvised warehouse camp are ruins. Luggage of these people was thrown away to a landfill and all of the shacks were demolished. Commissariat for Refugees has provided accommodation for these people in reception centers in Krnjača, Obrenovac, Sjenica, Sombor, Kikinda and Adeševci. But many of them decided to stay on the streets of Belgrade, with very low chances to continue the journey. I am Ivan Antanacković, reporting from Belgrade, Serbia. That was an interesting story from Belgrade, where I was scouring too and looking for some also interesting stories. But Patricia, you also wanted to do that, but something happened. Can you explain what? Well, I had some issues when reporting on refugees because I got too emotional with the girl I was reporting on and I lost my story. Yeah, can you explain what happened actually? 
I met this girl in a reception center for asylum seekers in Kutina. And she reminded me of my sister, and I suppose that is the root cause why things went in the wrong way. It bothered me that my sister's childhood isn't interrupted while this little girl is. I lost connection to that professional side of being a journalist. We started talking as friends, and in the meantime, her father uh, wasn't okay with me publishing the story. So I guess I lost my story, but I got a friend, so... So you the would balance do the is same okay. thing, right? You would do the same thing. I think okay. I would. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Patricia. And uh, while we were looking for refugee stories, we met a 21-year-old girl who should have done the same thing as we do now, interviewing. Yola started to study journalism in Syria, and her sister Katia dreams of being on stage. This is a story of two sisters with, and their interrupted dreams. Our reporters, Barbara Rabar and Petra Serjanovic, tells us this story. Uh, my name is Yola. I'm from Syria. I'm uh, 21, and uh, I was studying uh, journalism in Syria, it's just for one year, and then we go out. Yola and her two sisters live with their mother. She develops her writing skills using her phone. She's writing for the Jesuit Refugee Service magazine focused on asylum seekers and refugees. They are making a um, magazine uh, named Pathos and uh, I write, they published for me two times in Arabic and English and I, I will just keep writing with them. Yola's younger sister Katya played the drums in the marching band but her dream is to be on stage. Uh, I like to be an actress. I tried um, uh, once to act um, uh, in a play in Syria in Christmas, and it was great. Back in Syria, they were part of a Christian community. So, here in the center, the sisters spent time painting wooden Christmas decorations. Their thoughts are with their father and older sister, who are stuck in Damascus. You know, in Syria, it's... Um, the last, uh, the last, you know, period, it's very hard to live there. Like, you are walking and going to anywhere. You don't know when you are going to be dead. Just like, yeah, that's it. And it's being very hard to live. Uh, we should go out, uh, all the family, but my father is um, sick in the heart, so he can't uh, come like this journey in the sea. and. Yeah, so my sister stayed with him. <laughs> First we go to Lebanon, uh, then to Turkey, um, uh, then by sea to Greece, and Macedonia, Serbia, Croatia, uh, Slovenia, Austria. Yeah. We stayed in Austria 11 months and then they said you have a Dublin case and you will be deported to Croatia and we are here from 7 months. Finally, they have permission to return to Austria, but paperwork problems prevent them from leaving just yet. For Joa and Katja, the wait has delayed their education for too long. Uh, I had my matura in Syria. And uh, I just have to, uh, I translate it to German and uh, uh, I can with that matura go to college, I just have to learn uh, language. Uh, I must uh, uh, know uh, language, uh, speak some language and uh, I can go to uh, high school, Austria. But there is an Arabic high school, I think it's the better choice. Eventually, when they move to Austria, they hope their sister and father can join them. In the meantime, going back to Syria is not an option. Uh, if there is a change, it will be worse. Nothing is going better right now. Yeah, <laughs> we often hear of refugees from the Middle East, but they are not alone. Among 57 asylum seekers, some Cubans see the Balkan country of Montenegro as their new home. Andrea Lekic tells this story. Spuj near Podgorica. 
At the moment, in a center for asylum seekers in Montenegro, there are some 57 asylum seekers. Among them, a group of Cubans. Ozain came in the beginning of 2017 because of political reasons. Maybe here is different, maybe it is the same, but in Cuba, I am gay, and in the Cuba, we have a very homophobic system. And my couple is in Cuba. I hope, try to, to the, he come in here too. The number of asylum seekers from Cuba in Montenegro has increased. There are three sections in the center. On the ground floor are families from Cuba, Belarus and Eritrea. On the second floor are two separate places for men and women with kitchen and living room. Cubans like Montenegro the best. One family from Cuba dreams about their new future here. For Zain as well, Montenegro is a destination country. This is a beautiful place, beautiful. Yes. I, I was in the house of the King Nicola and I see all li little places, but beautiful place. Cubans and other asylum seekers are slowly introduced into Montenegrin culture and lifestyle. They see a bright future full of hope and happiness. For refugees, life starts when they leave the camps and get asylum. Syrian Jawad is successfully integrated into Serbian society. He graduated last year from medical school and now he is volunteering in clinical center in Novi Sad. He never stopped dreaming of a better future and now he is living it. Sonja Smiljanić reports. <laughs> Actually, when I was young, my mother wanted me to learn music, how to play music. But unfortunately, I was not caring and I was caring about playing football. And so I didn't learn how to play music on the instruments. But actually, I would like, I like to sing. My name is Jawad al -Durubi. I was born in Homs, Syria. And I grew in the city of Homs, which is a small city in Syria, the size of Novi Sad, very peaceful, ancient, civilized city. It's one of the oldest cities in the world. And I, then I studied in Damascus. I was studying in Damascus, uh, where I started faculty until I left Syria because of situations. Me and my family, we planned to move to another place. And like, we went to Dubai, in United Arab Emirates. And at that time, when we left uh, Syria, the situation was not so good. And we left uh, Dubai. At that time, we, it was like a challenge to adapt with the new life. da se jako dobro snalazi i da 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 ga karakteriše baš neka upornost i snaga da sve kroz sve to prolazi sam nakon studija o medicinskih studija ovde u Novom Sadu on se prijavljuje na neke dalje specijalizacije i što imajući vidu da dolazi iz Sirije i da dosta zemalja ne želi da prihvati nekog državljanina Sirije on je dosta uporan i bio uporan dok nije zaista i dobio zeleno svetlo da ode Well I'm most I'm more interested in Arabic so when we talk we only we only translate some some movie quotes and TV series that I that I really like I don't use Google Translate because I have Javad living near me. Bravo. Bravo, как ты? Хочу один черный чай. Сам реков. Добро, пала. Пала лебо. I use my best to speak with them, to understand. I could understand, I could explain them. You know, you know Badaje, actually I'm not good in Badaje, Serbian Badaje, 
but I can deliver my message and get the message from the patient. And everything getting better by the time. You know, it's the, every day I'm better than before. I was in Syria and I remember I was happy to buy my stethoscope. This stethoscope I bought at that time and I wanted it to be high quality. Uh, I bought it Reisner, it's German made. And I said it maybe will stay for with me since through my medical life. And uh, the, the funny thing, this uh, stethoscope was used from people for people around the world. I use it in Syria for Syrian people. I use it here in Serbia for Serbian people. You don't feel here in Serbia that you are a stranger. You feel like you are, it's your home. Like I always say, like Serbia is a big house and Serbs are a family. This lot from their country is trying to find a better life to start all over again. These refugees are the greatest example of human hope. When you don't have a home, how do you describe it? Same like this, boom, boom, boom. The world of video games for them is real. Thousands of those people escaped from war. Before it's amazing. Nothing problem, nothing. Anytime you can go out, it's safe, really safe. From guns and bombs to smiles, there is only one thing, hope. A feeling that makes us all equal, that makes us all human, that keeps us alive. Being a mother means to sacrifice your freedom for the sake of your children. Means to fear for their future and not yours, to put a smile on their faces. I want only life safe. That's I want. I don't want uh, uh, villa. I don't want uh, anything. I want uh, life, normal, same like anybody. You don't have asyl, don't have help. But uh, after asyl, maybe is something fine for you. I hope. <laughs> Trapped in the reception centers, everyone thinks of their interrupted dreams. Želim, želio sam uvijek da raditi u bolnica, možda onda e, e, medicinski brat. Onda, da. I hope I go and play football and uh, like Cristiano Ronaldo, Messi go playing football. I can find myself on the stage. I can be uh, me, just me. A doctor, a nurse, an actress or a football player. These guys can achieve everything they want regardless of a country that they consider their home. I want to go back to Austria. I have too many friends there. I had there uh, one team for Waliwa, one team for Ran. It was too great. We are all learning because we want really be gracious. Wherever they go, one thing stays the same. I am human, I am same like every, everyone, and I hope good for anyone here. We began our program with thousands of refugees forced to flee their homelands into the wild and reckless sea. We heard stories about families and young people escaping for a new home. Home and hope leave the heart of these refugees in the center of each story we have told. People just like you and I. Seeking the truth behind the headlines. They live it while we watch it. Perhaps in the process, finding a way to help. In a sense, we are all refugees, hoping for something new, striving for peace. Looking for new ways to move past the wounds in our life into the calmer waters. I'm Zoran Strika. And I'm Patricia Tomic. a greater goal and that is to report to refugees better. I've studied at refugees for three years but never seen it up close and so that really opened my eyes to what it's like for them in a transit center far away from their own homes. When I get in touch with children and refugees it was very emotional. We uh, became a crew so regardless of country or nationality or gender we all became one. 
Iranian refugees in Kutina Center and the team from the United States and the Balkan. Visiting Asylum Seekers Center in Kutina because I've never actually met any refugees, so meeting them and reporting about them really helped my journalism skills. Meeting new people and learning new ways of reporting refugees. How similar uh, Yola and I are. We are both uh, girls uh, the same age and we have the same dream, but our lives went completely different because of somebody else's decision that we cannot control. Work that I did with my colleagues, the new information that I found out, and that gave me a new perspective on the situation and will to work on it uh, in the future. Understanding the refugee crisis that is happening around me. I think my favorite part was being able to collaborate with so many reporters across the Balkans and report on such an important global issue. Meeting the refugees and uh, sharing this uh, feeling of empathy with other applicants of this world. It was a great opportunity to meet new people, um, to make new friendships and of course uh, to get uh, new knowledge. So the most memorable thing from the Balkan Bridges project are all those crazy multimedia stuff that, that Jay taught us. The number one, the most amazing thing has been the people. Just meeting everyone and just working together in this room. Really high stress, but everyone just coming together and putting massive effort. Working together and getting to know each other much better. The fun, the friendships, but most important, the focus on the future. That gives us all a lot of hope.